Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see here on our channel or our website. Reach out to me directly, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Today, we're discussing the Rolex Oyster Perpetual Cosmic Gravity Daytona made in 2018. The successor to the anniversary Daytona of 2013, it has the same reference, 116506, glorious gloriously resplendent in platinum with chocolate bezel and no diamond hour indices. The timepiece is still 40 millimeters in diameter and remarkably slender as I measure this platinum case only 12.1 millimeters thick from lug to lug 47.5 millimeters but if you include the solid end links to the bracelet it's a broad for a Daytona 52 millimeters across the wrist with a 20 millimeter spacing between the lugs. Throw it on the wrist and my goodness what a pleasure. A pleasure and a privilege you can feel the weight the mass and the class of this watch. Eyes closed, you know something special is on your wrist. The feeling of the heft, reinforced by the solidity of the solid link bracelet, the milled clasp, and the solid platinum case back really reinforces the occasion of this watch. Every moment feels special in its presence, and it's easy to wear on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist. It is nice and flat flush, easy to cuff underneath a suit sleeve, and from lug to lug, you can see the down the barrel. I've got plenty of clearance on either side. You can also see from directly overhead, though it is broad from end link to end link. It should still fit on a wrist as small as 13 and a half centimeters circumference, so a lot of wrists are gonna be able to wear this watch and enjoy that pleasure. Taking a look at the Oyster bracelet, you can see it's a three link design with polished centers, polished outer faces, removable links, fixed by screws and then satin flanking links for contrast. The clasp itself, as you can see, features a lift lock system internally. There's a beacon to hook. That snaps shut and then the clam shell snaps shut. There's a little kerf so you can dig your nail in and open it up. And then when you move over to the other end, you can see there is still the easy link five millimeter tool free adjustment system. It's the equivalent of adding or removing one sizable link. And you can also see that there are some divots with tracks drilled into the clasp. So you can use your strap tool to change the anchoring point of the bracelet inside of the clasp. So remove links, use easy link and change the anchoring point to size the watch. The Daytona case remains glorious. No need to reprofile here. This is not and has never been the super case. It has lovely compound curves, a fluid form when viewed in profile, and you can see how the light dances across. The lugs are nicely tapered, and they come to a handsome point. The crown, as well as the pushers, are screwed down, and the watch is 100 meters water resistant. You know you're looking at a platinum Rolex trip lock crown when the flanking dots are big and the center dot is small. Reverse that, and you see a trip lock in gold. But this is special. This is platinum. 100 meters water resistant, and as the bezel is entirely of scratch resistant ceramic, it is a remarkably hardy and tough piece. The bezel tends to act as a heat shield for the rest of the watch, taking up the knocks that would ordinary, ordinarily disfigure a precious metal timepiece. Now, it is special in that the tachymeter scale that's used has no particular units, miles per hour, kilometers per hour, your choice. So you can use the chronograph second sand to gauge the speed, for example, of a race car across a kilometer or a mile. Start, stop, and then read the scale. That's how it works. Also, the fill of the indices and the characters on the bezel that is platinum deposit inside the ceramic. The dial is Rolex's ice blue reserved for its platinum watches, and boy is this one special. Replacing the white gold loomed indices, the standard 116506, here we have baguette diamonds. This is treatment that Patek has lavished on some of its flagship pieces over the last few years. Uh, when Rolex uses it, my goodness does it make a splash, and on a full platinum Daytona with the ice blue dial, it is perhaps finding its element the perfect application of diamonds on a man's watch. There are also polished chapter rings for each of the sub-registers. You could see that the hands themselves, as well as the Rolex crown are in white gold, and the polished chapter rings bound a set of azurage or concentric guilloche for the register scales themselves. Now the timepiece features Rolex's three-day automatic caliber 4130 inside. Bidirectional winding, it uses a bearing rather than a jeweled staff. It was one of the first Rolex watches to use a rotor bearing instead of a jeweled staff, making it more shock tolerant. Winding in both directions, 72 hour power reserve, four hertz beat rate. It is free sprung with a full balance bridge for shock resistance and it has a blue oxidized niobium zirconium anti-magnetic hairspring alloy for magnetic resistance. That hairspring is also a hand-formed Breguet overcoil that allows the watch to receive a COSC chronometer certification it keeps excellent time in any orientation. That is a quality of the multi-position adjustment and the Breguet overcoil. The watch does feature a hacking or stop seconds function, and it pivots 
on 44 joules internally. It has both a vertical clutch and a column wheel. The column wheel making for crisp actuation, you feel it, you hear it, and then the vertical clutch making for smooth engagement. No jump or stagger as you would have on a lateral clutch. Moreover, you can leave the chronograph running full-time thanks to the vertical clutch. There is no additional hazard, wear, or tear to the movement. Now, Rolex takes that COSC certified bare movement and it cases it up and then tests it to run no worse than minus two plus two seconds per day. And that is the Rolex superlative chronometer standard to which this timepiece is set before it leaves the factory as a fully cased up watch and consumer product. A timepiece that exhausts superlatives, but perhaps I could just say this. It's beautiful, undeniably so. Email tmaso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.